Today is January the 2nd. Today we see that sin spreads. As we read through the Bible in a year today, let's read Genesis chapters 4 through 6. Now in Genesis chapter 3, we had the story of Adam and Eve disobeying God and being cursed as a result. In Genesis chapter 4, sin spreads. For the first time, uh, what Adam and Eve done is given a name. That name is sin. Adam and Eve had two sons, Cain and Abel. Abel raised livestock. Cain raised plants, grains. Both gave offerings to the Lord, but Scripture says Abel gave the best that he had, while Cain gave of the crops in the field. Not necessarily the best that he had. As a result, God receives Abel's offering, but not Cain's. Cain is now jealous. The Lord comes to Cain and says, Cain, the problem is not what you're offering. The problem is your attitude. The Lord says, sin is crouching at your door, but you can master it. This word for sin occurs almost 300 times in the Old Testament, and it means to miss the mark, to try, but there's something wrong with the way you're trying. And as a result, you are sinning. You know the story how Cain said, well, if the Lord's receiving Abel's offering, let's just get rid of Abel. Then I'm the only one making an offering and God will have to receive mine. Um, Cain is also cursed as a result. Now, Adam and Eve have another son, a son named Seth. Um, Seth, uh, grows up following his mom and daddy, doesn't follow the pattern of Cain. We hear very little about Cain, but in Genesis 5, we have Seth's bloodline traced all the way down to Noah. That occurs in chapter 6. In chapter 6, the sons of God come to the daughters of men and uh, have, um, they take them. It's interesting. It says that they looked at the daughters of men and saw that they were good. Many of our translations say beautiful. It's actually the word good. They saw the goodness, but they corrupted it. They took them instead of, uh, wooing them. Um, as a result, great heroes were born, even giants were born. Now, the Lord looks, and this time it doesn't say that he sees the sin of man. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, uh, the Lord says he saw Human wickedness, that word occurs a little bit over 300 times in the Old Testament. It's also translated evil, depravity. This is not that they tried and missed the mark. This is that they intentionally do the opposite of what God wants. They are evil. They are wicked. They are depraved. We saw first that what uh, happened after Cain sinned is we have a new bloodline. It's like the Lord says, let's let you try to see how you can work your way out of sin. So Adam and Eve say, we'll do it again. We'll, we'll start all over. We'll have a new bloodline. Uh, that doesn't work because it ends in human depravity and evil. 
Now, the Lord says in the rest of chapter 6, I'm going to destroy it all. If a new bloodline didn't work, let's start all over from scratch. He ordains a flood, but he finds Noah and says to Noah, build a boat. Now, the Bible says Noah was a good man. He was a righteous man. But that does, isn't why God called Noah. He called Noah because Noah found grace in God's eyes. The solution always rests with God. Enjoy today as you read Genesis 4 through 6. Now Adam had sexual relations with his wife Eve, and she became pregnant. When she gave birth to Cain, she said, With the Lord's help, I have produced a man. Later, she gave birth to his brother and named him Abel. When they grew up, Abel became a shepherd, while Cain cultivated the ground. When it was time for the harvest, Cain presented some of his crops as a gift to the Lord. Abel also brought a gift, the best portions from the firstborn lambs from his flock. The Lord accepted Abel and his gift, but he did not accept Cain and his gift. This made Cain very angry, and he looked dejected. Why are you so angry? the Lord asked Cain. Why do you look so dejected? You will be accepted if you do what is right, but if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you, but you must subdue it and be its master. One day Cain suggested to his brother, Let's go out into the fields, and while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Afterward, the Lord asked Cain, Where is your brother? Where is Abel? I do not know, Cain responded. Am I my brother's guardian? But the Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are cursed and banished from the ground, which has swallowed your brother's blood. No longer will the ground yield good crops for you. No matter how hard you work, from now on you will be a homeless wanderer on the earth. Cain replied to the Lord, My punishment is too great for me to bear. You have banished me from the land and from your presence. You have made me a homeless wanderer. Anyone who finds me will kill me. The Lord replied, No, for I will give a sevenfold punishment to anyone who kills you. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain to warn anyone who might try to kill him. So Cain left the Lord's presence and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Cain had sexual relations with his wife, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Enoch. Cain founded a city which he named Enoch after his son. Enoch had a son named Erad. Erad became the father of Mahuthjila. Mahuthjila became the father of Mahushala. Mahushala became the father of Lamech. Lamech married two women. The first one was named Ada and the second one was Zilha. Ada gave birth to Jabal, who was the first of those who raised livestock and lived in tents. His brother's name was Jubal, the first of all who played the harp and flute. Lamech's other wife, Zilha, gave birth to a son named Tubal-Cain. He became an expert in foraging tools of bronze and iron. Tubal-Cain had a sister named Nehuma. One day, Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zilha, hear my voice. Listen to me, you wives of Lamech. I have killed a man who attacked me, a young man who wounded me. If someone who kills Cain is punished seven times, then the one who kills me will be punished seventy-seven times. Adam had sexual relations with his wife again, and she gave birth to another son. She named him Seth, for she said, The God has granted me another son in place of Abel whom Cain killed. When Seth grew up, he had a son and named him Enosh. At that time, people first began to worship the Lord by name. And this is the written account of the descendants of Adam. When God created human beings, he made them to be like himself. He created them male and female, and he blessed them and called them human. When Adam was 130 years old, he became the father of a son who was just like him. In his very image, he named his son Seth. After the birth of Seth, Adam lived another 800 years, 
and he had other sons and daughters. Adam lived 930 years, and then he died. When Seth was 105 years old, he became the father of Enosh. After the birth of Enosh, Seth lived another 807 years, and he had other sons and daughters. Seth lived 912 years, and then he died. When Enosh was 90 years old, he became the father of Kenan. After the birth of Kenan, Enosh lived another 815 years, and he had other sons and daughters. Enosh lived 905 years, and then he died. When Kenan was 70 years old, he became the father of Mahalalel. After the birth of Mahalalel, Kenan lived another 840 years, and he had other sons and daughters. Kenan lived 910 years, and then he died. When Mahalalel was 65 years old, he became the father of Jared. After the birth of Jared, Mahalalel lived another 830 years, and he had other sons and daughters. Mahalalel lived 895 years, and then he died. When Jared was 162 years old, he became the father of Enoch. After the birth of Enoch, Jared lived another 800 years, and he had other sons and daughters. Jared lived 962 years, and then he died. When Enoch was 65 years old, he became the father of Methuselah. After the birth of Methuselah, Enoch lived in a close fellowship with God for another 300 years, and he had other sons and daughters. Enoch lived for 365 years, walking in close fellowship with God. Then, one day, he disappeared because God took him. When Methuselah was 187 years old, he became the father of Lamech. After the birth of Lamech, Methuselah lived another 782 years, and he had other sons and daughters. Methuselah lived 969 years, then he died. When Lamech was 182 years old, he became the father of a son. Lamech named his son Noah. For he said, May he bring us relief from all our work and the painful labor of farming this ground that the Lord has cursed. After the birth of Noah, Lamech lived another 595 years, and he had other sons and daughters. Lamech lived 777 years, and then he died. After Noah was 500 years old, he became the father of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Then people began to multiply on the earth, and daughters were born to them. The sons of God saw the beautiful women, and took any they wanted as their wives. Then the Lord said, My spirit will not put up with humans for such a long time, for they are only mortal flesh. In the future, their normal lifespan will be no more than a hundred and twenty years. In those days, and for some time after, giant Nephtalites lived on the earth. For whenever the sons of God had intercourse with women, they gave birth to children who became the heroes and famous warriors of ancient times. The Lord observed the extent of human wickedness on the earth, and he saw that everything they thought or imagined was consistently and totally evil. So the Lord was sorry he had ever made them and put them on the earth. It broke his heart. And the Lord said, I will wipe this human race I have created from the face of the earth. Yes, I will destroy every living thing, all the people, the large animals, the small animals that scurry along the ground, and even the birds of the sky. I am sorry I ever made them, but Noah found favor with the Lord. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, the only blameless person living on the earth at the time, and he walked in close fellowship with God. Noah was the father of three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now God saw that the earth had become corrupt and was filled with violence. God observed all this corruption in the world, for everyone on earth was corrupt. So God said to Noah, I have decided to destroy all living creatures, for they have filled the earth with violence. Yes, I will wipe them all out along with the earth. Build a large boat from cypress wood and waterproof it with tar, inside and out. Then construct decks and stalls throughout the interior. 
Make the boat 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. Leave an 18-inch opening below the roof all the way around the boat. Put the door on the side and build three decks inside the boat, lower, middle, and upper. Look, I am about to cover the earth with a flood that will destroy every living thing that breathes. Everything on the earth will die, but I will confirm my covenant with you. So enter the boat, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Bring a pair of every kind of animal, male and female, onto the boat with you and keep them alive during the flood. Pairs of every kind of bird and every kind of animal, every kind of small animal that scurries along the ground, will come to you to be kept alive. And be sure to take on board enough food for your family and all of the animals. So Noah did everything exactly as God had commanded him. Scripture reading by Emily Herrera. Like, follow, and subscribe to this devotional on whatever platform you use to listen to it. Email your questions to us at questions at becomehope.com. If you're interested, New Hope Church has a companion podcast called Salty Saints that deals with apologetics, scripture, and theology. Look for it on your favorite podcast.